The world is a beautiful but challenging place to live. And let's face it, life hits hard sometimes. So if you find your hopes and dreams and mental well-being needs a boost, you're tuned in to the right podcast. Welcome to Inspire Us with your host, Jay Paul Nadeau, a former hostage negotiator turned motivational speaker and acclaimed author of Take Control of Your Life. And now, here's your host, Jay Paul Nadeau. Hello all and welcome to Inspire Us. Yes, I've been away for a bit, but I'm back and I am back with a vengeance. (laughs) I've got a few shows that I want to upload and talk about. First, I'd like to talk about a couple of things that have been happening in my life. I am now a number nine bestseller. My book, Take Control of Your Life, is a number nine bestseller in Canadian airports at least, and it's making a difference in a lot of people's lives. So if you have not picked up the book, Take Control of Your Life by J. Paul Nadeau, I highly suggest that you do because it's a book on how to beat self-sabotage, how to really treat yourself well, and how to change your world if you are suffering from any kind of imposter syndrome or self-sabotage. Whatever it is, it can make a difference, and it is making a difference in a lot of people's lives, as I said. And it is also going to be available shortly as an audiobook, so that's cool. The other thing I want to talk about is the importance of really taking care of yourself, especially these days when things are still very difficult with the pandemic. Uh, There's still a lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of restrictions going on, so please do take care of yourself. And about that, my next guest, my guest this week is Rock Thomas. He's a friend I met in Miami. This man has made such a big impact in the world. He has a gold cast uh, video and audio that you've got to watch. And 100 million people have been affected by this, impacted by this wonderful video and the wonderful lessons that Rock talks about in his gold cast. And in this show, in this episode, he's going to be talking about self-examination, personal choices, our growth mindset, and the power of our identity. So, Without any further delay, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the wonderful one and only Rock Thomas. Hello, everyone. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of interviewing my friend, the one and only Rock Thomas. So, Rock, welcome to Inspire Us. A pleasure to be here, Paul. I just uh, honored to be here. I've read your book. You're a brilliant man, and you're also a very humble man. So thank you for having me. Rock, I can say the same thing about you. When I first met you, I met this kind, warm individual who is making such a big difference in the world. Just to alert some of my listeners, if you have not already checked out Rock's bio, he has influenced millions of lives. His gold cast presentation, I want to get into that in just a moment with you, Rock, but that message was so uplifting to so many people it made a difference in so many people's lives Uh, you are also the podcast host of one of the most popular podcasts out there i am movement and i want to get into that because i happen to be a guest thank you very much for having had me on you're a best-selling author you're a motivational speaker what is it that you don't do rock i mean you do it all what is it that you don't do (laughs) You know, I probably don't spend enough time calling my mother and connecting with her, although I do have a good relationship with her. But other than that, I try to do everything. (laughs) Okay. So in 2022, because as I record this, this is the end of 2021, we're we're nearing Christmas time right now. So can I get your word that in 2022, you're going to make some adjustments to make sure that you call your mom more regularly? Man, holding me accountable out of the blocks. I love it. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You got it. That's what friends are for. We have these accountability coaches, these accountability friends, and it's so much easier to get through life. Talking about getting through life, I have read and I have watched your goal cast. And can you share with our listeners your humble beginnings in Montreal on a farm? I, I want you to take us through that because I, I'm wondering how that developed you into the man that you are today. Yeah, my parents got divorced when I was five and I lived for about three and a half years with my mother. 
but she was a bit of a gypsy. And so she was rarely around. So I would come home from school and I'd get myself into trouble. And so I started stealing things and I started eating lots of sugar and I started setting fire to things because I wanted some attention. And so my mom shipped me off to live with my dad who had remarried and now was married to somebody who owned a farm with 22 horses. And so his idea of straightening me out was his version of boarding school, which was put me to work. And so I fed uh, the horses, I fixed things around the farm. And my first big lesson that I got was that it's not the resources you have, it's being more resourceful. There was often times when I'd go to him and I'd say, I, I can't fix this. I don't know how to fix the barbed wire fence, or I don't have the right tools, or I have to fix a crack in the cement pool or putty a window. And he would never tell me how to do it. He would tell me to figure it out, go back, think, try to see what the other, you know, what could you do? And that was the biggest lesson in my life because I have since then learned how to be incredibly resourceful, very capable in difficult situations, which has served me in building, you know, 45 different streams of income, multiple businesses, because my brain doesn't go to, this is impossible, it can't work, we don't have what it takes. I ask a better question by default from the program I got was, how do we make it work with what we have? And I think a lot of people could benefit from that because a lot of people, they start thinking, you know, I want my problems in life to be smaller instead of trying to become more creative and more committed to finding a way. And so wherever I am, whether it's on a sports team and our best player goes down, my brain doesn't go, we're, we're screwed. It goes, okay, how do we adjust now? Move the players around and win and dominate. And I think that's what Tom Brady does. Tom Brady doesn't play the victim. He doesn't think I'm going to lose. It doesn't matter if four of his best receivers go down. He still believes he can win. He's still committed to the outcome and he's still willing to work with the resources he has. And so that was a great gift I got by my father not telling me what to do. The flip side, Paul, is that I didn't feel seen or heard or loved. And on some level, I felt emotionally abandoned. And so as I grew up later, I became an outsider and I became individual uh, in the things that I did. I alienated myself from groups. And that took me decades to overcome, you know, feeling like uh, I didn't belong and I couldn't fit in. So I think there's, as you go through growth, there's a benefit to everything, but there's also a flip side and that's the side we have to work on. Some people don't have my warrior attitude of, you know, take the hill, but they're compassionate and they're loving and they're sensitive and they're good listeners. I had to work on those things over, over a course of decades. How did you actually come to that point in your life where you started to, to reconnect or to connect? How, how did you get rid of that past? Because that was a pattern, I'm, I'm imagining, a pattern that kept you disconnected really from the world is what I'm hearing. How did you turn that around? Because so many people right now are feeling that. They, they're, they're living from their past patterns or in their past patterns. How did you change that for yourself? I've always been committed to growth. I'm a very, very curious person. I love to learn. Um, I've taken every course you can imagine out there. I've done Reiki, I've done rebirthing, breath work, screaming classes, uh, worked with horses, um, done chair work where you talk to your parents like they're there. Uh, you name it. I've probably done it on India on a meditation, Tony Robbins, Landmark. I mean, the list goes on and on. And so I don't know where all of it came, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing is in Landmark, they have this concept that they taught me called that us humans, we want to look good and at least not look bad. Because if we look bad, then we're not enough for our environment and we don't fit in and we won't be loved. So most people spend the majority of their energy trying to look good. They're committed to looking good and to blaming outside sources. Oh, yeah, I would make more money, but it's, it's because of COVID. Um, oh, I would have been on time, but there was construction. And so when you're invested on blaming the outside circumstances, you become a victim. My definition of a victim is when you allow the circumstances on your life on the outside to overwhelm you and you are not dominating them. We're back to the lesson number one is, I don't need a hammer to hammer a nail. I can find a rock. I can find the back of my shoe, right? 
So I don't play the victim in that situation. So I think what I've done in my life, Paul, is I'm committed to growth by being curious and open. And through that, you discover, you get feedback from people in your life. You go, well, Rock, you're, you're a dick. <laughs> or the way you're communicating is intense. That's not really working. Remember when I had my Remax franchise, I would walk in and if the receptionist was not actively doing something like licking envelopes or answering the phone or doing something, I'd, I wouldn't even say good morning to her. I go, Julie, why are you not doing something? I pay you by the hour to do something. Why are you sitting there just looking at the wall? Two days later, she'd quit. My manager would come to me and go, you know, Julie quit. And I go, why, what happened? He goes, she's afraid of you. And I, after several occurrences of that, I realized that I needed to look at how I was showing up. And so that's when I continued the quest to modify, you know, how I was presenting myself to the world. Because most of the time we talk to ourselves and to others the way our parents talked to us. And my father was a German, intense guy who was not the guy that smiled very much. It was about get straight to the point, boom, boom, boom. And so I modeled that until now where I'm this beautiful, sweet puppy love guy. <laughs> uh, you're talking a lot about self-examination, which a lot of people don't do. And uh, I think it was Socrates who once said that uh, an unexamined life is a life not worth living. And when we think about examining ourselves for the purpose of growth, which is what you're talking about, that's, that mindset of growth, which is what you've implemented in your life to such a great degree of success. What is it that we could tell our listeners uh, to, to mimic or to do what you've done in that, in that self-examination realm? Can you give some tips on how to do that? 100%. I'll tell you the first thing is stop defending yourself. People justify and rationalize their behavior and they spend their energy. Imagine you have, um, you know, a hundred units of energy and every time you defend a position or justify why you couldn't get X result, you're spending that energy. And at the end of the day, you're going to have nothing left. So if somebody says to you, we can't start the meeting if you keep on arriving 10 minutes late, instead of going, yeah, well, the traffic, my dog, whatever right? It doesn't matter. Just say, you know what? You're hundred percent right. My bad. I arrived late. Next time, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to set an intention to come early so that I can be supportive of the group. But you see, to admit that takes courage. It takes self-awareness. It takes a, a, a real deep desire to grow. Yesterday, I was talking to one of my team, team members, a salesperson, and we, were, we enrolled a new person. And then we, we were talking about what that person's going to do in the first day. And is it okay if I swear on here or? Absolutely is it, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. So <clears throat> she says, she says, oh no, that's going to be way too much work for him. And I, I went, I mean, I just lost it. I went, don't fucking tell me what is his limitation. That's not your fucking job. And this is what happens is people take their position and they try to project it on other people because they're defending and justifying and seeing it through their filters. I want to live a limitless life, life to the best of my potential. And so I call it below the line or above the line. Where are you? If you're below the line, you're committed to justifying, rationalizing, defending, and being right. If you're above the line, you're open, curious, and you're committed to growth. So she sent me a text afterwards and she says, I did not love the way you communicated to me. Can we talk? And so I called her up and I said, um, you know, Carrie, uh, can I apologize to you? It was unprofessional and rude of me to speak to you that way. Um, it was inappropriate. I just, I'm very passionate about building this organization and I will not tolerate limitations. It's not your position to do that. And I still feel you need to work on that. And so 10 years ago, I would not have done that. I would have been, you know, listen, you yeah, justifying and blaming her, et cetera. And it didn't feel difficult to do because my behavior was inappropriate. It was passionate, but it was inappropriate for the context of that. And so I owned it and I've become a better person for that. And I've grown through it. 
And so that's how I run my life. How can I grow? Every situation, humans are going to make mistakes. We make mistakes all day long. But how beautiful to own it, to apologize, to reconnect, but then to not lose your personal standards in the process, not to dilute what you want to create, but to become more clear and a better version of yourself. There's a very, very beautiful message out there for all of our listeners, and it involves accountability. It involves deciding to not live below the line, but to bring yourself above the line where you are open and on this journey of self-improvement. And in doing so, I would imagine there is a very big importance to surround yourself with like-minded people or people who can help you get to the next level. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? How, how important is that to surround yourself with the right people? Oh my gosh, it's such a great question. You know, I don't know if the listeners are familiar with Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. So let me just quickly walk them through that. Imagine four squares um, on the left-hand side. At the top, you have employee, and at the bottom, you have self-employed. On the right-hand side, you have business owner and investments or investor. Robert says that if you're going to become financially literate or free, you need to get to the right-hand side of the quadrant. You got to learn how to run businesses, hire, train, employ people, so you can have the benefits of living a leveraged life. Otherwise, you're going to be working the rest of your life. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. As an investor like Warren Buffett, you've got to get really good at discerning what are good organizations to invest in, where to put your money so your money works hard for you after you've worked hard for it on the left side of the quadrant. It's your job or as a you know, self-employed salesperson or something like that. So most of my life, I was a great employee, got lots of promotions. I showed up early. I stayed late. I worked hard. I didn't complain. So I checked that box off really good. Self-employed, I was a real estate agent for many years, um, struggled the first year, but opened to growth, became really good the second year. I had a mentor who helped me, and I went from one sale the first year to 100 sales, and four years later, the number one agent in my office, and then I bought the company, and I took it from 94 agents to 275, over a billion dollars of sales a year, and at the age of my mid-30s, I was making $1.3 million a year for myself which was amazing if you think that that's 20 years ago, probably 2.5 million today, maybe 3 million today. I bought, I bought things, et cetera, et cetera. So good employee, good self-employed, um, good business operator. And I took all that money and I poured it into investments in gold mines in Australia through my brother-in-law, uh, throwing it into one stock in the stock market. And for the next 15 years or so, I virtually lost everything. Mm. About 10 years ago, I became wise to the fact that if I'm going to become a master of that last quadrant, I need to surround myself with people that are way smarter than me, have different disciplines, rules, and have figured out that game. And so that's exactly the quest that I went upon. And today, um, I have 45 different streams of income and in businesses. Uh, I got 100% return on the stock market last year and the year before after being terrible my entire life. I own many pieces of real estate. Um, I don't have to work. I make more money in a month now than I did most of my life in a year. And most of it is passively. And so all of that is not because I'm so smart, but I got myself a seat at the table of people that are way smarter than me. And we are in agreement like you and I are, Paul, is to challenge each other, to hold each other accountable. When we see somebody make a declaration that they want to lose 10 pounds, run a marathon, read a book in a month or whatever, we say, hey, well, keep me posted. Can I check in with you on that, et cetera? And so that there's this sense of belonging and connection. And then people want to belong and connect. And so they step up. And so it's changed my life. And now I've started these mastermind groups, literally helped hundreds of people become millionaires. Hundreds of people change your life. Somebody lose 120 pounds and become an Iron Man. Other people that have had crappy relationships dig down and work through their childhood trauma and find ways to change. Other people that have a story inside of them and they've become an author, a podcaster, a guy who is a CPA who now has 48 doors of Airbnb and teaches online courses. You can look him up. He's called the Airbnb guy, retired his wife, retired his mother and retired himself. Now charges $10,000 per student per year 
to help them do just the same thing. So that one concept of who you surround yourself with changed my life entirely because most people, Paul, as you know, they don't know what they don't know. I love that, Rock. Uh, yeah, we are the company that we keep. And what is beautiful about what you said is seeking those people who have more knowledge than you, the smarter one in the room. You don't always have to be him or her. When you surround yourself with smart people, you get smarter. And it is, uh, it, it's the quality of the people around you that bring the quality of the things inside of you. One of the things that you teach, you help others learn the power of their identity. And I read that uh, on your website. Could you explain that to us, the power of their identity? Yeah, so as we, as we grow up, we start to be given labels from people, you're shy, you're funny, you're beautiful, you're too short, you're too tall. And we accumulate these references to understand how we think we're supposed to show up. And eventually it formulates into this image we have of ourself. And then we want to remain consistent with it because we'd either we'd, go, we'd be schizophrenic. If, um, if you went to a party and you didn't know that you're fun loving at a party or you're shy or you're the crazy guy or what have you, you wouldn't know how to behave. So there's this strong force inside of us that wants to explain to others who we are. I'm a non-smoker. Um, I don't swim. I'm a great golfer. And then as we build it, we believe that's who we are. And we spend most of our life trying to prove to people that that's how we are. Mm. And so how do you, if you've struggled for 20 years with money and your parents struggled with money, you were not good at the fourth quadrant of investment. You never knew how to run a business. And all you know is being an employee. Well, guess what? you're probably gonna to want to think you need to be an employee for the rest of your life. So the transformation that I teach people is that it's a romance affair by changing the words that follow I am. So you could say, you know, every day more and more, I am moving toward being a great business owner. I am a wonderful investor and surround myself with people that are really smart in the cryptocurrency world. And so as you start to romance that and build files in your brain that give you the opportunity to believe you can be different, then you start to become different. And you just have to think about something that you did. Uh, you weren't born an author, Paul, but at one point in time, you decided to become one. And so you went through a process of, you know what? I think I have something valuable to write. And so you could walk us through, what was that like? How did you go from not being an author to being an author? Mm. This is a fun thing. I never intended to become an author, but everybody kept telling me I had such interesting stories and so much to say. And I listened to whispers. I've come to learn that those whispers that come to you uh, come to you for a reason. And if you don't listen to them at the end of your life, and I've said this before, right? At the end of your life, you're going to be visited by the ghost of missed opportunities, missed whispers who said, you know what? You could have changed so much in your life had you only followed this. So for me, it was sitting down, time on my hands, in between jobs uh, way back in 2013, and being visited by one of those whispers saying, it's time to write that book. And then from there, it was building that muscle to become an author and to take a shot, to take a risk at doing it and not worrying about whether I was going to succeed or fail, just putting in 150% into it. That's how I did it. And so that's how we transform. And if we don't, if, if say somebody said to you, you've got some great stories, but you were below the line, you had self-doubt and you're like, ah, you know what? I don't know how to write. Uh, I'm not good at grammar. Uh, who am I to tell my stories, et cetera. Then you would never have written the book. And this is why we go back to the most important ingredient to transformation and success is you are the company you keep, as you say. You are the people you surround yourself with. You are the people that are in your world and getting you to um, believe that you can be different. And so if somebody's around you and they're saying, hey, um, you should write a book and you, you, they encourage you to do it and they give you the contacts and they give you some references and they say that they'll write the forward for you, et cetera, it facilitates the whole process and you walk around in your morning rituals, Paul, going, yeah, you know what? I am a best-selling author. That's right. 
and my stories need to be out there. Like I do yoga virtually every morning at 5.30 in the morning. And I have my rotating favorite affirmations. Right now I'm, I'm doing, I approve of myself. I approve of myself. And I, I challenge your listeners to say that 400 times a day. And most of us beat ourselves up and we don't like parts of ourselves. So what do we do? Oh God, I should have made that investment. Oh my God, I should have sold my crypto before it went down. I don't know why everybody quits on me. I can't leave my team. Instead of, I approve myself. I make great decisions. I approve of myself. How about this one? I am loving and lovable. I am loving and lovable. How about this one? Um, all the cells in my body are working in harmony to eliminate any dis-ease in my body and keep me strong and healthy. Mm. I feel good and I look good. I love the so way these are all parts of the transformation, Paul, of the I am movement. Um, most people are I aming themselves into a really poor identity. And so the people in my world, we are I aming ourselves into the better version of ourselves. Rock, I absolutely love everything that you've said and uh, I appreciate all the time that you've taken to be here to share your experiences, your knowledge, and that wonderful power that you have with our listeners. Do you have any, uh, any parting thoughts uh, before we uh, bring this to, uh, to a conclusion? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I have a gift for your listeners, if that's okay. Uh, if they go to rockthomas.com forward slash free book, they can get my book where they'll learn about the top 10 rules that I use to coach people and help people break through. I'll share rule number nine with you. It's called, what's great about this? Anytime you have something happen in your life, we are meaning makers. We are always, you know, giving meaning to things. And if you don't have a tool to transform, then a concept doesn't work. You know, people are like, oh, be positive when things are rough. How do you be positive when you got a flat tire or when, you know, you lose $100,000? The way you do it is you activate a tool. And for me, the tool is to ask a better question. One of my favorite questions is, what's great about this? I remember once I had a flat tire and um, I was actually in a tuxedo on a way to a, to a December 31st uh, New Year's Eve party with my wife. And it was in Montreal, it was snowing outside and I get this flat tire and I was like so upset. And then I caught myself and I said, what's great about this? I turned to my wife and I said, you know what's great about this? You changed the tire. No, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I said, um, roll down your window a bit, turn on some good music. I am going to change this tire in record time. I got out to the car, looked at the, the back and the tire was on the side of the median, not on the side of the road. And I go, that's awesome. I'm not going to get killed by a semi truck. You know, <laughs> it's over here on this side. I open the trunk. I've got a spare tire and I have the tools. This is amazing. And so I worked myself into a frenzy by focusing on the things that were available versus the things that are not available. I was above the line, not below the line. I was giving myself a chance to appreciate what I had, not what I didn't have. And when seven minutes, I changed the tire, went to, to the party, and I had a story to tell people at the party about how I appreciated the fact that I was able to focus on this. And I had a great time. All because I asked what, one question, what's great about this? So as, as these listeners go through their day or week, I challenge them when something goes not the way they hoped or expected, let's try asking that question, see what shows up. There is your challenge, ladies and gentlemen, all listening. How can we come up with better questions and how can we ask ourselves when things don't seem the greatest, what's great about this? And then just bring ourselves above that line as Rock has been telling us. And Rock, uh, I am going to put that link in the show notes so that each and every one of my listeners can download that wonderful book, 10 Steps on How You Can Really Manifest the Most Amazing Things and Create the Most Amazing Things in, in Your Life. And it really is up to you. And as you've been telling us throughout this, the mindset of growth, surrounding yourself with people who can lift you up, teach you things, makes all the difference in the world. You have made such a significant impact on the world. Uh, I, I have watched your bowl cast more than once. It's, me, or it's reached 100 million people and you continue to reach the lives and change 
people, taking them from a, a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. You're creating millionaires. You're helping people to live the life that they deserve to live. And you're reminding them that they do deserve to live it. And for that, you are an ace of a man. You are an, you're an angel, my friend. And I so appreciate you. And I'm so happy that I get to surround myself with you. That's my friend. Well, I appreciate it. You know what? Your listeners, damn it, they just need to ask a little bit more in their life for what they want. <laughs> are you saying, damn it, just ask? Damn it, just ask. Is it that Ask easy? and it shall be given. Yeah. <laughs> you either get what you want or you'll have an opportunity to grow. It's win-win, baby. It is, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on, Rock. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for another insightful episode. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and leave your comments. For more information, check out our website at www.inspireus.ca. Remember, it's not what happens to us that matters most. It's how we respond to what happens to us that does. Stay strong and resilient. 